this is about a patient who is 65 year old teacher who was implanted with a bifocal IOL uh, both the eyes uh, nearly 10 years back and uh, she ended up with a opaque IOL in the right eye and uh, there was a yak capsulotomy which was already performed by the operating surgeon in the right eye following which the opacification was realized and then the patient was referred to our center for an IOL exchange. Here we are dissecting out the anterior capsule from the IOL and uh, we fill the chamber and the space between the capsule and the IOL with a dispersive OVD something like chondroitin sulfate and, uh, we are getting the part of the haptic out of the bag once we do that we again fill the chamber with a dispersive viscoelastic make a 2.2 millimeter incision that is what was planned for because patient did not want a monofocal we had planned for a trifocal toric IOL once both the haptics are out we are cutting along the optic uh, which is with this modified Osher's scissors and the left hand is a Sinsky hook which is trying to uh, stabilize the IOL and give down the fraction so that uh, there is no movement of the IOL so that helps the endothelium being protected So this scissor goes in through, uh, it's like a, uh, a retinal instrument and it's not, uh, and it goes through a 2.2 millimeters uh, incision. So that's the way it was modified and it has serrated uh, edges. So that really helps cutting the IOL, well, gives a good grip on the IOL. Well. So one half, we've again cut along the haptics and make it into two smaller halves and then using a IOL grasping forceps which has serrations on it again for a good grip we remove off those two pieces and then the second half is positioned opposite to the incision and cut along the axis of the haptics it's important to fill the chamber with a good OVD and that really helps because in these cases the main problem is going to be damage to the endothelium. A vitrectomy was performed and we realized that the YAG opening is pretty stable with fibrous edges so there were, the bag was intact so that was a good thing which went in our, in our favor. After doing a thorough vitrectomy, you have to see to it that none of the fibers are going across the YAG opening. You put in a viscoelastic and fill the space between the posterior capsule and the anterior capsule so that it's easy to put in the IOL. The patient was already registered using a Varion. So, we are going to be doing a Varion guided implantation. The dispersive OVD also helps in dissecting out the fibrous areas. So, if, if, when pushed forcefully, it actually opens up the space between the PC and the anterior capsule. Again, you have to be discreet about uh, how much we are using because we don't want an extra thing going into the vitreous and later on causing an IOP spike. It's very difficult to remove off that visco dispersive viscoelastic from the posterior chamber. That's the axis in which we are going to be implanting. A panoptic toric was decided upon and uh, 
the IOL was opened up in the chamber. While putting the IOL in the bag, we had already tried to get the IOL's access in the area wherein which we want it to be. So the dialing was done beforehand and then using a careful technique in which you tuck the haptics and then slowly nudge it into the space between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. So once the leading haptic is in, We again dial it further so that we can get it in the exactly the axis that we want it to be in. And then using the same technique, we again tuck the other haptic into the bag. You have to wait for the entire IOL to open up in such cases because it gives you the entire expanse and the support for the IOL so that it can be easily put into the bag. We all also had kept a standby monofocal IOL ready and the patient was counseled about that okay if we are not able to put it in the bag we are going to be exchanging it for a in the sulcus three piece IOL. A myotic voice used to uh, constrict the pupil in this case and then the rest of the viscoelastic was removed. The technique of using the dispersive viscoelastic of, uh, is more of using the flow to uh, free it from the endothelium and then remove it uh, with the aspiration but the aspiration should not be uh, near to the endothelium. To summarize with the capsular bag intact after YAG, it's possible to implant IOL in the bag using good techniques. It's possible to do so through a 2.2 millimeters uh, incision and a judicious use of dispersive viscoelastics is advised.